everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Hopefully this video will be about my 18th century Brunswick jacket that I'm going to be making, but if you have been watching my channel for a little bit, then you will know that, first off, Brunswick does have to be worn over stays and you'll know that I didn't actually finish my stays in my 18th century stays video from a couple of weeks ago. So. I'm wearing the stays right now. I had mentioned in that video that I wanted to wear them for at least a couple of hours and see like how they fit and everything before I go ahead and finish off all of the rest of the boning channels, like close them off and bind everything because I have not yet bound everything. I also have not yet done the straps. Even for the wearing today, I did not do straps. I still don't know if I'm gonna do the straps. I probably will wear this one more time with straps attached and see how I feel, but I didn't feel like I needed the straps today at all. So I've been wearing them now for two and a half hours and my one worry is that they are still too large. I just feel like I'm not really having any compression anywhere. Now I am used to Victorian corsets where there's obviously a lot of compression. I get compression in my other stays. So part of me is thinking, is it just that I don't know how much compression I should be getting? Like, should I not actually be getting compression in stays? Or are these too big? <laughs> so yeah, I'm still torn on that fact. Because in wearing them for these last two and a half hours, they have been very comfortable. I've been standing at my sewing table for a good portion of that. I was actually sitting for a good portion of that as well, like here in my sewing chair. And they were comfortable. They didn't ride up which is amazing. That's the problem that I get in all of my stays. And so I feel like maybe do my other stays right up because they're too small. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe this is actually how they're supposed to fit. It's just weird seeing that like I can do this, you know, in my stays. Like that doesn't seem like it should be a thing. So I think before I dive in on this Brunswick project, I am probably going to wear these one more time with the straps and I'm sincerely debating about taking them in some more as well. They are not fully laced closed in the back. This is the same lacing gap that I had in that last day's video, but it's the lacing gap that I want to exist. So I don't really want to pull them closed to that like one and a half inches because I want that to be there. And like even, okay. So I just pulled this lace so that it would like close all the way pretty much everywhere. This is the level of compression that I feel like I am used to having in stays. Maybe even more compression than this. So to me that means that I need to take them in another inch and a half, which sucks. But maybe I should wear them for a couple of hours fully laced shut and see how I feel about that because if suddenly they start riding up, at least all the way shut, then maybe that is a sign that they're supposed to fit looser. I still don't think they're supposed to fit looser, but maybe that's a sign. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I don't have any more time to wear them right now because I have to go walk lion and I don't wanna do that in stays and my pajama pants. <laughs> so um, I will try them on again later, lace all the way shut and see how I feel. So as I mentioned, I decided I would try the stays on fully laced up in the back and see how they fit for another couple of hours. Again, I did not yet do the straps, but I have now been wearing these for, I think it's been about two hours, maybe even a little bit more at this point. And as you can tell, the back is fully laced up. The front is almost fully laced up. Like right here, we've got probably about a half an inch, maybe five eighths of an inch. And basically like every, I wanna say 45 minutes or so, I have actually kind of felt like they were loose and wound up tightening them. So I did start with a lacing gap that was probably closer to what it is right up here, like all the way down. And then it was a little wider up here. But as you can tell, pretty much everywhere I have now tightened it, including up at the top. And to me, this, considering the back is also fully laced closed, this is too loose. And it still feels like I could honestly like tighten it more. I don't have the same like 
poofy effect that I was getting when I had the back not fully lace closed, but it is definitely too loose. So that means I have to figure out where to take it in more. I had kind of been looking right after the last time I talked to you, I'd been kind of looking at some of the places where like there aren't any bones, but it would be really weird. I feel like to just take a tuck in the middle of a piece, like I know I should take it in at seams, but if I take it in at seams, I have to move boning channels again. I really don't want to do that, but yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably honestly going to take in like the center back, wherever that seam is. I honestly can't feel it, but I'm just going to take in that straight seam, another like chunk, like probably at least an inch per side. And hopefully that will make a difference because it does seem like since I'm lacing it all the way close in the back and I want a lacing gap, that it makes sense to take it out of the back. So I think I'm gonna give that a go. But obviously these stays are not yet ready to be bound. I'm about to try this on for what I really hope is the last time to get fit, but I wanted to show you the ridiculous amount that has now been taken out of the back. So yeah, this is how much was taken out on each side before the last time that I tried it on. And then I've curved it out so there's a little bit more down here at the bottom part, and then all of this in the back on both sides. So I have these giant fins. We'll see if I can even get this on. Luckily, I'd already laced up the back. I don't, you know, those won't be in the way. But yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. So these stays are obviously on now. Of course, I did not notice until after I had already laced everything up that I forgot to put a couple of the bones back in. So I'm really, really hoping that my fit issues are due to the bones and not anything else. I've been wearing them now for I think about 15 or 20 minutes. So I definitely do need to let them kind of adjust for longer. But as you can see, I do have a lacing gap all the way down in the front, a little bit wider at the top than it is at the bottom. At the bottom, it's just one inch. And then I also have like about one inch in the back as well. So that is kind of the minimum gap that I wanted. I think that the back probably should be a little bit looser open. And the front should be a little bit tighter, but I had cut off my excess ribbon after the last time that I laced it, like fully laced closed. So I don't have that ribbon. And one thing that is worrying me, speaking of ribbon, I've just been using like the ribbon that you get for a dollar at Joann's. I think it's like quarter inch satin ribbon. I've been using that. The red one in the last video had already broken. So like the third time I laced it up, it, it broke. This yellow one is like, I can tell, I can see that it's fraying in places. And I'm like, what did I do wrong with these eyelets? The things are fraying already? Now I've never done hand done eyelets before, but I didn't think this was supposed to be a thing that like ribbon would fray so easily. I thought that was, if anything, more of a metal grommet thing. So let me know if you've experienced issues like that with ribbon. I'm not really sure what to use to lace it up otherwise, if not the ribbon, but obviously it's not really lasting very well. So let me know if you have any tips or advice on items to use to lace it as well. But yeah, the fit otherwise, other than these wrinkles right here, the fit is otherwise good. I think the wrinkles are the fact that I forgot to put boning back there. One side is missing one full length boning channel. The other side is missing the same plus one of the little tab bones. So there's only one bone in this tab right now. The longer one is missing. And I think that there may be a channel back there that I need to redistribute because by taking it in this last time, I basically took out another full length boning channel in the back. So like I have the ones that are here by the lacing and then the next full length, there is a full length like here-ish, I think. Is that the one? There's one that's missing. So <laughs> whatever that one is, that, oh, right here, this one is missing. And then there's just bones over here. So I am a little bit worried that it's like, doesn't have enough, but I guess we'll see. What I have to do now with this, besides wear it for the next hour plus, is I am actually, I've decided that it's probably worth it to take it all apart. Oh, I don't know, is it really? Because the thing is, if I take it apart, I accomplish two things. One, I can more easily surge off the excess in those seam allowances because all of my inner like edges are surged. So that would be one thing that I can do. 
two, if I fully take it all apart, most likely also taking the bones out of it, then I can like press it flat, trace around each pattern piece and have that for the future, which seems very important considering how many alterations I've been needing to do to this pattern. It just dawned on me, I still haven't done the straps. These might just be strapless stays. The straps are sitting on the floor. I cut them out. I just never attached them. These might wind up being just strapless stays. We'll see. I can always do that, like, you know, at some point, which is kind of the next thing. The tabs and stuff, that's going to get bound at some point. To be honest, maybe even taking apart will just happen at some point because I'm ready to start on the Brunswick. Like that's what this video is supposed to be about and here I am rambling on about my stays and fitting them and fitting them and fitting them and those videos already happened. So on that note, let's talk a little bit about the Brunswick because I have been playing with-ish cutting out patterns to potentially use for the Brunswick. So first off, what's a Brunswick? A Brunswick, they seem to come under a lot of different shapes of like different elements that can be put together in different ways to make a Brunswick. And I've looked through a bunch of different sources. I've looked through like people's blogs online. I've looked through like the patterns of fashion type books, um, you know, all that sort of stuff about what Brunswicks are. The general consensus is that it is a shorter jacketed, as in not full length, because I believe if it is a full length version, it becomes a Jesuit but it's a shorter jacketed version that has a hood and is meant for traveling. It can be made out of quilted silk. It can be made out of regular silk. It does seem like they were mostly made out of silk. I don't know if they were ever made out of wool. If they were, it was probably very, very fine wool, but the hooded element is probably the most important. And then, yeah, it's, it's shorter. Like it's about here-ish as opposed to full length, which would be a Jesuit. Now, once we get past that, why I say Brunswicks can be lots of different things is that some people say that Brunswicks are sackbacks. That seems to be the most common type, is that it is like a petten layer, basically, but made with a hood. At its most basic, it's a petten layer with a hood. And a petten layer is a sackback like Robe la Francaise, except short hip length. Some people say that Brunswicks were worn without any like skirt supports underneath, which does make sense for traveling and stuff like that. But then you also see extant Brunswicks or things that are labeled as Brunswicks that do have skirt supports. And of course, a mid-century petten layer would have skirt supports. Uh, Brunswicks do seem to be very common kind of in the middle of the 18th century. So starting, I think around the 1750s, there might even be one that dates the 1740s, but like 1750s through like 1770s. I haven't really come across any that are like after the 70s. So it does seem to be that middle period. So we're generally talking about if they're skirt supports, it would be more like pocket hoops as opposed to bum, rounded bum supports. So that's one thing. Um, some Brunswick's seem to be like a petten layer where you would have it stop, you know, about here and you'd have like the robings here and it would pin close across the stomacher or sometimes the stomachers would have buttons. I don't know if those were faux buttons or functional buttons, but a lot of times they would have a button detail. However, there are also Brunswick's that have a waistcoat appearance, which seems like it would be much more practical for traveling. So you have some that like button all the way up to the top and are worn with like habit shirts underneath. Now, several costumers of note, including Nicole here on YouTube, that was way before she started her YouTube channel, um, as well as Demode Couture and Koshka the Cat, they have all made Brunswick's that have a separate waistcoat. So like it's a fully separate waistcoat piece that is worn over a habit shirt and then the Brunswick jacket sort of item comes to about here and pins to that waistcoat. All of them in their blogs said that that was done for function so that they could then wear the Brunswick like as a petten layer for example and it wouldn't have the waistcoat attached whereas there are also extant examples that do show the waistcoat actually being attached all the way up so it would be like, I guess, sewn into the robings and then would 
button up with functional buttons, I think would be the idea, because I can't imagine pinning a waistcoat that is this high. So I'm still torn on whether I want to make mine all the way up or not. Over on Instagram a while ago, I showed you kind of my main inspiration, which is this pink one right here. This one doesn't fit a lot of those rules. Although it does look like it is like a sock back, it has been banded around the waist, but you can still tell that the pleats in the back are like the Robe la Francaise type pleats. And one of my favorite portraits of a Brunswick, which is this one right here, this one has a rather narrow opening of the robings with the waistcoat look all the way up at the top, which is definitely what makes me think like it's all attached, especially because the, where the hood's coming from. When Nicole and those other customers were making their separate waistcoats, they were having the hood actually come from the waistcoat, but it's pretty clear on this portrait that the hood comes from the robe itself. And honestly, since I'm making mine out of quilted silk, it's not going to be something that I would want to like transfer into a patent layer. So I am thinking no matter what, that I'm not doing a separate waistcoat type look. So yeah, that said, starting with a patent layer does seem like a good idea, even though my favorite one is not the same as a patent layer. So a patent layer, you generally have like the front V right here of the bodice and then you have skirts that are attached and then in the back it is cut you know full length with the robe la francaise type Watteau pleats but this is not this is fully cut like shaped panels that are in the front and sides and then in the back we do have the Watteau pleats that have been bound down to the waist so I'm really torn on what to do because obviously that's a quilted version and I feel like because I'm using quilted silk, my fabric is going to react more like the extant one as opposed to like the one in the portrait, which is just regular silk taffeta. So yeah, there's definite considerations to take because I think that my fabric, since it is bulky, is going to act in different ways than people making it out of silk or fine wool. Now I have made a pet and layer once before, years ago, I think it was 2014. And I have like a few of my blog posts on it back when I did live journal and stuff. I made it as part of the curtain along group for costume college that year. A lot of people making stuff out of a Waverly print curtain. And I know I used a pattern from Janet Arnold. I used this pattern. I still have some handwritten notes in this pattern. I can't find the pattern anywhere. Like the actual my size pattern. I have gone through all of my patterns multiple times now. Found a lot of other stuff from like around that time that I was sewing, like other 2014 projects. I cannot find that pattern. So that's really frustrating because that means if I use the book, I basically have to start from scratch with these scribbles and just figure out what these scribbles of notes mean because they're not very clear. They're like numbers and arrows and that's about it. Another option if I go the pet and layer route is to use something like Simplicity 8578. That was the one that American Duchess did and to shorten it into pet and layer. Now that said, this is incredibly wide in the front like way, way wider than I would want it. I mean, based on the portrait that I really like, it is like here. Sorry, Abby, I know, I feel like I'm touching you inappropriately, but it's like here, like very, very narrow band on that portrait. And I do really like that look with the waistcoat, but then the extant one doesn't have that at all. It practically is just like a hoodie and it comes together right here, closes down the center front, doesn't have any stomacher, nothing like that. And so I keep feeling like I'm looking at the accent right now. I keep feeling like I should just figure this out, but I have no idea what would be the pattern to get this extant. But maybe I should try just putting stuff together and seeing if it would work. And if it's historically accurate, great. And if it's not, oh well. I'm kind of thinking that route. Now, one pattern that does kind of fit that, at least in the front, is this one right here in Patterns of Fashion. This is a Caraco from 1775 to 85, and it is cut in one all the way down from like shoulder, you know, down to hem. It's the right length. This is what it looks like all finished up, this one right here. It's the right length, and I could probably alter the back to just be a sack pack is my thought. I don't know if I'd also need to alter sides, but maybe I could just like combine one with the other. 
It doesn't have the right fit overall though because it is still very much like you know, comes down to here, has open skirts, etc. Whereas the pink extant one does not. It's closed all the way. I don't think it actually closes below the waist, but it does come to the center and closes down there in the center. So even still, this isn't going to be the right pattern. And I feel like from the absolutely terrible pictures of the pink one online, that there are multiple seams going on here to allow for shaping in the skirts and in the bodice, whereas this is just one front flat piece. Now the problem, of course, is that I can't find the actual source of this, you know, where it's living, what museum it's at, etc., anywhere online. Uh, at one point, at least, it used to be in the National Museum of Denmark, but like, you can't seem to search their collection online. I couldn't find a way to look at their collection online. There was someone who had put it in like a Tumblr post or something like that and had linked to the actual place and that link is a 404 not found. So that doesn't help. Like they even put in the acquisition number that doesn't come up on the museum website. So I've got really awfully blurry pictures to go off of and that's it. Which is why I think I kind of have to make it up myself which is really frustrating. Another potential option from this book that maybe could be altered to have a sack back is this jacket right here which is from 1760 to 1740. It's on the curve so you're only gonna get part of it but it is obviously much too short but it does have multiple pieces in the front that create multiple seams and it doesn't have any waist seams. So that was what I was thinking that could be another one. Oh, one other thing about the Brunswick that is like an identifier of the Brunswick or seems to be is the fact that Brunswicks are cut with regular like gown three quarter length sleeves with originally flounces here and then later kind of a ruched trimming and then additional lower sleeves were sewn in around the bottom which I think is why the pink one doesn't have the lower sleeves because they were just like whipped in place and that is because apparently like women's gown makers didn't know how to make two-piece sleeves. I feel like I'm perpetuating a myth here because I feel like this could not be a thing, but supposedly the tailors who made riding habits were men and they knew how to do two-piece sleeves and the mantua makers who made other women's clothing didn't know how to make a two-piece sleeve. It was beyond them, so they said they did an upper and lower. That's why I feel like that's perpetuating a myth. I've read that multiple places online and I feel like they're all just repeating the same thing, so I don't know if that's true or not. I'm actually just realizing something about the pet and layer pattern that I used last time. No, of course I haven't pulled my pet and layer out of the garage closet to see what it actually looks like. You know, I do need to do that if I decide to go that route, but I'm realizing that although it does have like skirts that are not attached to the upper portion of the bodice, they are actually all hidden underneath pleats. So let's see if you can see this. So there's a bunch of pleats that are all dense in there and that is where like the pleats and the pattern are going to. Otherwise it is cut in one actually top to bottom both in the front and the back and it does have the sack back in the back. God I wish I had my pattern from last time that would be so nice. The other thing is that there is actually a pattern for a Brunswick in here. It calls it a white quilted satin jacket with hood and matching petticoat. It does not specifically say Brunswick. It's this one right here and it is this pattern right here. But as you notice, that one does not have a sack back and it also has like the lower cut front with really, really wide rivers. I don't know how to pronounce that. But I think it's spelled R-E-V-E-R-S, the, the fold back right here. They're really, really wide, like they stick out to here. And I don't love the look of that. It's just not what I want from mine. And of course the pet and layer also doesn't come together here in the bottom. So it still wouldn't be perfect. But unfortunately I don't have a pattern that is perfect. And there does not seem to be any like printed patterns, like patterns that are already done and not, you know, in this, that are for Brunswicks. Like not a single one, not of any variety of Brunswick, because now we know there are lots of varieties. There's just none. I wish that I knew patterning and could do patterns for like sale better than, you know, the one pattern that I managed to do in one size once. 
I know, I still want to give you that 19 teen summer dress pattern. I don't know if that's ever gonna happen. But yeah, someone should make a Brunswick pattern. So if you have patterning skills and abilities, I urge you, make a Brunswick pattern, make a good one, sell it online. Cause I think people would buy it. So anyway, I am gonna go figure this out. I'm gonna take some measurements now that I have stays that work and make up a pattern. So I decided to try to write an email to the National Museum of Denmark to see maybe if they could send me more pictures. Their website says that all emails are answered in one business day. So ideally, I should have an answer for you guys that I could share with you in this video. I wrote the whole thing via Google Translate, so it may make no sense. But we'll see, maybe I'll get some closer up pictures, which is what I've asked for, basically pictures that are of a higher quality. In the meantime, I have now taken all of my measurements with everything with the stays on. I've also now been wearing them for quite some time and they're still fitting great. So I think this is the, the final <laughs> fitting for those days. But I had really hoped to start working on the Brunswick tonight, like with the patterning or something. And I am just really torn on whether I should make it like the pink one or make it like the gray one in the portrait. Because part of me is starting to wonder if maybe the pink one is actually a Danish thing that like wasn't what they did in, you know, England and France and stuff, which is fine. I mean, I can make that choice to do that, but maybe that's why I'm not finding literally any others that just close all the way down the center and are higher necked without a waistcoat or anything. I've gone through all the patterns and patterns of fashion <laughs> which is basically like the only source that I have. I really want to start it tonight. I still have a good two hours that I could work on sewing and then I have all of tomorrow that I can work on sewing. So I need to figure this out before their email gets here. But right now I'm just feeling overwhelmed with choice. So maybe I'll go post an Instagram poll and see what you all think. So I decided to put the pet and layer, the curtain along one on the form, just so I could kind of see how it looked and how different it might be from the one at the National Museum of Denmark. And I feel like the back is incredibly similar. I don't know for certain if like the neckline is, but the rest of it is super similar. Like the pleats are the same. So I really think that the back of this pattern is what I want to use no matter what, except possibly for the fact that this does seem to really dip down lower in the back than on the sides. So I don't think I'm going to do that. I think it's going to be even all the way around, but like even the length is good. So yeah, this is the winner. I just have to figure out if that, I think that's even the neckline because the hood seems kind of lowish, doesn't seem like it's right up at the base of the neck. So I think I'm going to go with this. Of course, I still have to start the pattern from scratch because I don't know where this pattern is. So that's great. So now let's talk about the front. So obviously this does not remotely fit my dress form, but this would be like pinned into this stomacher. But as you can see, the stomacher is pretty darn wide. So no matter what, I can't use this exact pattern for the front because if I do it with the like faux waistcoat style, really it's going to come to about here and by it I mean these robings it's going to come to like about here and have a narrow line kind of like that all the way down and then if I do the other one from the museum it's actually you know closed all the way to the front I'm really leaning towards that you guys are leaning towards that too right now it's winning with like 57 percent of the vote as opposed to like 43 percent but that means that I have to pattern this from scratch because I just don't think like any elements of this can be translated into that. So I'm thinking that the pattern from this jacket might be the best, even though it's really not remotely right. Because if we look at this, like that is the front. And what I'm looking at, I don't know if this is going to work on my phone, but I've been staring at this. They have not sent me any additional pictures yet. What I'm looking at is that there seems to be a seam right here in the bodice underneath my thumbnail. Sorry, I know this is bad. I should just put it on the screen, but I'm not going to. And so there seems to be a seam there, but then does that turn into the side seam where we have the front and the back having their different colors? I feel like that is the signifier that there is probably a seam right there. And then there's like pleats going on here below the waist. 
Ugh, I wish I had better pictures. So I decided to just like kind of throw caution to the wind and attempt to drape this in the actual silk. So that's what I've done here. This is literally just one width of the silk. I think it's like about 60 inches wide. And I've gone and I've plated it all up so that it has the sack back type pleats. I kind of started to base this off with the simplicity pattern, but the pleats on that are weirdly narrow and I did not want that. So I widened the pleats. This is the edge. I know it's hard to see. And yes, I'm keeping this with the squares like straight on the grain because A, otherwise it would be bias and B, I just don't have enough fabric to like attempt to cut this on the grain. What I have also done is I've made a little bit of like a waistband situation. This does appear to be something that's like sewn in place, I think, and it's only shown in the back. So that to me means that it goes into the seams in the side and I may actually not even need a fitted lining or usually these sack backs have like a lace up lining in the inside maybe I can get away with doing a fitted lining because of having this so I'm kind of hoping for that but yeah everything's just pleated there this one panel the panel is not quite wide enough to be like the entire back because the simplicity pattern for example it's cut with like three widths or something like that but I'm gonna have to seam together this I've just folded down the shoulder but it does extend further and then has the arms eye at least in the simplicity pattern however simplicity patterns are always super super wide and I also widened this so actually I don't know maybe I can get away with just using that I think I'm gonna have to play with some stuff probably do a mock-up of the lining and see what that looks like so I've grabbed out my Amalia bodice pattern, my screw patterns, as an attempt to use this as a base. Now this was not built over these stays, but I figure it might still be a decent base. It is center front closing, which I feel like is a big important deal. And what I'm thinking here with this bodice is to actually do kind of like a slash up here to wherever the bust point would be and like pivot it open because that will give me the opportunity to create a dart and then have the skirt have that extra volume here, which I think is what's going on in this extremely blurry picture right there. But I really have no idea. So that's my hope that that will work. I've also grabbed out the other lining pieces here. This is the back. So I was looking at the back on the bodice, like, you know, that I have draped up and it should actually all fit on here. I think there is, however, also a side piece here. So I don't know where that plays in, but I kind of feel like there should be a separate side piece with its own skirts like flowing out because that will give me more room in the skirts. Also, part of me just thinks that this looks lovely as like a robe with the pen layer underneath. The colors are just, you know, chef's kiss. So I have decided to try the probably rather crazy, stupid, and won't work method of draping this on myself. Like the front pieces, side pieces, back piece. We're gonna try and see what I can do completely by myself, because I live alone, because this whole patterning thing, not working. Like, I pulled out those screw patterns like I showed you, but they're so many alterations that I would have to make that it's just like why bother starting with this pattern and I don't have any patterns for anything like this so I have some random cotton right here and I'm going to try to pin it on myself and make it a bodice who knows if this will work I will attempt to like have you watch this and put it in super super speed up mode I don't know if that will work either because I'm going to be doing this all in my mirror over there, but uh, let's give it a go. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm actually concerned that I did make this too wide. I thought that the pleats looked the right width compared to the extant one, but the way that they're sitting on my shoulders seems really, really wide. So of course I basted them in place, but I think I might have to change them. So I went and I made one of the pleats smaller by an inch, basically one pattern repeat less. I don't even remember which one it is at this point. It's this one, it's narrower by an inch. I'm attempting to pin it to my chemise because I don't have hands behind my back and this really doesn't work. But now I'm worried that it's just too narrow. And of course I can't see anything. Maybe I'll watch this footage back and see what this looks like on the footage. 
because I can't see what this looks like when I'm trying to take pictures of my back in the mirror. So if this were fitted, what would this look like? Okay, we're trying this again with the belt. I think the problem with my mirror pictures is that my mirror is just too filthy and I literally can't see anything but like a glare when I take a picture in the mirror. So for my reference, what does this look like besides shiny and stress garbage? Honestly, now I'm feeling like the right side looks better, which was the original with. So I guess I'm going to go back to the original with and I don't know. I'm so over this project between the stays and trying to figure this out. And I haven't even started the front of the bodice. I'm so over this project. I really wanted to make this by Christmas. I already knew that this was going to be at least two parts and then the second part would not actually come out to you guys until a little bit after Christmas, like a few days after Christmas. But I really wanted to make it for me for Christmas, like before Christmas, because it's so, you know, Christmassy. It's red quilted silk in like perfect Christmas colors. Right now I just want to throw this project in a corner and I've barely begun it. But I just want to like go make doll clothes that don't involve any fitting at all because this is frustrating the heck out of me. It's basically completely pointless for me to attempt to drape the back on myself. I mean I knew it was pointless but it's pointless because I don't even have anything that I can pin it to because the neckline of the shimmies is low. So yeah, that's not working. I'm going to skip to the front, see if we can get anything out of the front since that's really the big question mark piece anyway. And hopefully I won't throw this entire project in the garbage. of that you are able to see in the mirror or not hopefully you saw some of it but basically I think this might actually work um I have it pinned to myself in various places mostly like the stays are good places to pin into because they're not going to move unlike the chemise which really can shift but I tried to bring it up to where my shoulder is don't know if I got there because this is really pulling it down so we'll have to see once I cut that off but like I trace the arm side here and I'll probably give myself some seam allowance on the outside of that. But yeah, I traced like a side seam. I pinned this dart here and I drew in the center front and then like cut away the center front and the neckline. And we will see if this works for the front piece. I'm not sure how I'm going to get the side to work, if at all, but uh, I guess we'll try that next. So surprisingly enough, I think I'm actually finding that I may not need a side piece. This can't come all the way forward right now because I haven't cut the arm's eye out, so it's still just a flat panel. But I think that once I do that, like this is actually meeting underneath here. So I think I could potentially just do a front and back and I just have to carefully cut the arm's eye out in the back because, you know, I can't really draw it on in any way, shape, or form, which is helpful. Uh, but then, yeah, I think I might actually just be able to do this as my front pattern and then do the back like this with, you know, the subtle bit of shaping, which would be nice because I think even the skirts, I know they're mostly out of frame, but I think they even seem full enough considering this is like, you know, supposed to be for travel and warmth and not lots of grandiose skirts. I think it's pretty decent fullness. This like dart here really helps. And I did curve this out significantly here on the side, so that helps. But yeah, I think it might actually be okay. 
So I have the fronts cut out. I'm starting on the assembly now, like I've already done the darts and I've surged around the edges. I am not lining this with anything because it is already lined with cotton. That's what this is right here. The cotton is like quilted into the silk. So I'm not going to do any additional lining because that just seems superfluous and even more bulky. So I'm about to press these darts and then I think I can just join it to the back pieces. Oh, actually, no, one other thing I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna attach the belt to the back at the sides. I think that that will be good. I probably won't cut off the excess of the belt yet just cause I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually need that to maybe come around inside and close like a waist stay because there's just such a lot of bulk and weight in the back that that belt actually has like a lot to do. So I kind of feel like it might need to come together and actually close in the front. So yeah, I'm just gonna attach it on the sides now and then it will wind up going inside the front. I'm also going to try to do pocket slits as I assemble the sides together here, except that to be honest, this petticoat, like the pocket slits, are super forward. I can't even find it. They're super forward. They're here. And then my other petticoat, they're like not. So pocket slits, oh God, they're way back here and they're tiny. So pocket slits on this are gonna be probably pretty unusable, but I just feel like it should have them anyway. I mean, if this wasn't 18th century and things made more sense, I literally would just add inseam pockets but they didn't do that in the 18th century. Of course, they also didn't serge things or make things out of pre-quilted silk that is in the shape of squares. Tempting, very tempting. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make inseam pockets. So this is what the back looks like laid flat with the pocket bags and the belt pinned in place. I think I'm going to not only stitch down the sides of the belt, but I think I'm actually gonna stitch like right along this little stitch line, which is in the center back. Honestly, I'm tempted to do one of over here instead, because that will help the pleats lay better, I think. Like stitching the center, it doesn't actually catch the pleats. And it's the pleats that I'm concerned about poofing, kind of like they're doing right now even. But I feel like if I stitch somewhere in here, it's gonna be obvious. I don't know. I mean, it would be good to like maybe just stitch there. That would that would make a lot of sense to stitch the centers. Okay, maybe I'll try that instead. I'll stitch two centers instead. Okay, I have everything assembled now. Luckily, because it's only three pieces plus pockets, it really went together pretty quickly. However, there is one issue and it is with the belt portion because I put the belt too low. I don't know if you can see, I can't looking in the monitor, but it's like just poofing out everywhere. So yeah, obviously that's not what I want at all. And I don't, I don't think it's a shoulder issue. I think it's where I put the belt. And naturally, instead of just stitching it in those two little places, like I showed you, I stitched it all the way across the back. So like a horizontal line all the way across. So I am gonna have to fix that. I'm gonna have to unpick that and move the belt up. Ugh, I really wanted to get out of the stays. It is like 12.45 in the morning and I have show stuff to do all tomorrow for Cinderella. But I'm so close that like, if I just take the belt off and move it up, then the base of this will be done and I don't have to worry about fittings. So I think it's worth it to not have to put the stays back on to fit everything. So I have unpicked the belt in the back. I've moved it up on the sides. Basically I moved it to fully where the top was before is now the bottom of the belt. I have not yet secured the back at all because when I had pinned it in place like level across the back, it was poofing significantly in the upper back and I'm wondering like, okay, either does it need to dip down and then get secured? Like it needs to get pulled down on me, pinned in place and just secured there, which is kind of what I'm thinking. Or do I just constantly pull it down? <laughs> Cause it just, I don't know. I think I'm gonna try the securing here, but I have to finish tonight. Like I, I have to be done for tonight. It's way too late at this point. So yeah, I think I'll go ahead and pin it and we will call it a night. Obviously everything is 
closing up the front here great. One thing that I didn't really think about was like a facing though. So I do want to do or I will need to do some sort of facing, I think, on this. I mean, I could even just do a little bias binding, but I feel like a facing is gonna be better. And then it will probably hook an eye up the front. It's hard to tell, because it's a center closing and it's such a bad picture. It's hard to tell if it butts up edge to edge or if it overlaps and then gets pinched down the front. I'm not sure. It definitely didn't have like a button front closure, which honestly I'd like a button front closure, but I didn't create a big enough anything here to make one. So I don't think I, yeah, no, I couldn't do that. I would need at least a half an inch more fabric, which I don't have, but overall pretty good. The shoulders were a little bit like big on the edges. So I've put a pin there to taper it down and I'm going to also like cut up because by doing that it gives this funny little point, which I obviously don't need. I do kind of wish there was a little more fullness to the skirts here, but it's not bad. I've got my nice cozy pockets made out of my wool from my coat, which is great. And I forgot to press my darts, so those aren't pressed yet, but they seem to be fitting really, really well. The neckline is actually too high. I need to cut it down because every time I lean forward, I get choked by it. And the one that is the accent is definitely a lot lower. So I think I'll probably cut it to about here-ish, maybe somewhere about there. Let's put a pin in that. But overall, here is our base. Oh, the one other thing that is kind of funky is that somehow I cut the fronts longer than the backs. I'm not sure, but the front is way long right now, so I do need to even out the hem as well because I really like the back length. And then the front is just like, it starts longer than the back at the side, and then it dips down way low in the front. I know you can't see any of that, but uh, yeah, overall pretty good. I just need to figure out how to secure those back pleats. Well, I don't have too much progress to show you, but I do have just a little bit. I wound up unpicking the super, super low stitch line here that I had done on the back and unpicking the belt and everything. I moved it all up, what is that, like three inches higher up, I think? And I have now stitched down the belt. Instead of stitching all the way across this time, I stitched it down vertically in four places that hopefully you can't even really see. I think you can a little bit by the divots, but basically I stitched it down on the edges of the Watteau pleats. And I think that that's done nicely. I have not yet tried to press this area to try to get this line out, but I think it should press out. Like some of the stitches are honestly still in there, which is why I think it looks kind of obvious, but those need to come out. But yeah, that belt moved way, way higher than I had anticipated. The other things that I've done since I last talked to you was I cut the neckline down a little bit lower, and I also cut the arms eye up a little bit higher, and I have folded up one side of the front hem so that it would be like the even length all around, and then I just need to match the other side to it. And then I'm actually gonna cut that off because it is even with the unhemmed back. So I need to be able to hem all of it with just honestly, probably like a bias tape hem, but we will get to all that and all of the rest of this project next week when we will be adding sleeves and hood and finishing, and frankly, I mean, I think that's all we kind of need to add, right? Just sleeves and the hood and all the finishings. That's not too bad. I think we can accomplish that next week. Now, obviously you won't get to see that next video before Christmas, but my goal was for me to make this before Christmas. So I guess I'm still meeting my goal and you'll just have a little bit of extra holiday you know, later. And who knows, maybe that means we have snow in the forecast again for like the end of next week. So maybe, maybe that means, keep your fingers crossed for me, that I can take snow pictures in this, which would be freaking amazing. So anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed this video so far. I know it was a very long one, but now I have stays that fit 
and the beginnings of a Brunswick, both two very challenging projects. So if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Mirage, and Laura. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing and happy holidays.